Ghana, the old Gold Coast, rich in natural resources, but many of its people are locked in poverty. One man who knows what it's like to be poor is now their champion. When I go to the communities and they say they're hungry, I know what it is. When people have land and it's been taken away and that they, they are not going to have anything to eat, I understand it. This week on African Voices, Daniel Owusu Korontang, founder and CEO of mining advocacy NGO, Wacom. Ghanaian activist Daniel Owusu Korontang is a man of many missions. A trade unionist by day, he's always felt the need to do more, to be a voice for those who struggle to be heard, the rural poor of his native land. I was born and bred in a very strict Persian, you know, background. And that gave me a foundation to understand that good things are good, bad things are bad. You know, I had to know, even as a young person, that I did not need to cut edges in life and that I should see uh, myself as a person created by God and that I had a purpose in life. These were things that were provided to me as part of my family background as a, a son of a president priest and um, also when we were growing up something happened. What happened was that when I was the age of 10 my father died. My mother was it's a very strong personality type she was a type who felt that um, she would not succumb to any challenges of life. And she decided to take us, we were five children, she decided to take us from home and um, settled in the eastern region of Ghana and decided to bring us up single-handed. And um, that brought us, that shifted us from, well, so what I say, the more comfortable life of living in a month, in the in the, what do you call it, the, um, in, the, in the religious environment into some harsh environment. And within that period, I learned a lot of things. I learned to understand what was hunger. I, um, I learned to understand what poor people go through. Um, even though my, my mother ne never stopped telling us that we were going through this um, for a purpose, especially for our education. But I have grown to understand that it was my school, my life, and the problems that we, but that we went through within the period when things were tough. That made me a good person. I used to have regrets about my father's death and ask about why my father should die at a time when things, when we were just growing up. But today I understand that when nature wants to use you, or God wants to use you for many things, he makes you go around. And as you go around, you gather different experiences. And that, that is what has become the motivating you know, um, drive for me. When I go to the communities and they say they're hungry, I know what it is. When people have land and it's been taken away and that they, they are not going to have anything to eat, I understand it. As a young man, Daniel decided to devote his life to helping the less fortunate. He knew he needed a partner who shared his commitment. I had taken a contract. With, with nature and I wanted a woman who also had this understanding of life in terms of the higher purpose of life of helping the poor and I met this beautiful woman in school you know, physically beautiful then I realized that she shared a lot of my convictions uh, even though she came from uh, what I would call a middle class background but she shared very strong sentiments and convictions about ordinary people. And that became the starting point of um, strengthening our relationship and then it turned into marriage. And so began a life partnership between Daniel and his bride, Hannah, a sharing of both domestic and professional commitments. Working for the Department of Agriculture exposed them both to the negative effects of large-scale mining on Ghana's rural poor especially in southwest Ghana, an area of fertile farmland and gold. Hannah and I were both working in the Ministry of Agriculture. And before then, 
Um, I belong to a nationalist group called the New Democratic Movement, where young people, some of them intellectuals, who knew that Ghana was rich potentially, but were not happy about the way we are. We have not been able to manage our resources in, in the best interest of our people. So we continued studying what what brings about this thing, uh, poverty, and the poverty is a social phenomenon. Um, it's not like somebody is born poor, but conditions, you know, could prevail which could make people poor. So somewhere along the line, um, my university was closed down. So the university was closed down for about nine months, you know, around 83. When we came home, then we learned that the government at that time was going to sell the state gold mining com company, the Takwa Mine, um, for a pittance. In fact, the government had gone in for about 35 million Can Canadian dollar loan to rehabilitate the underground mine. And that became Owusu Korenteng's first test as organizer and advocate. I was given the task to build a campaign with underground miners because I was then on holidays. And I, I took that task serious. Why? Because first, the underground miners were very, very militant. And they were also going to suffer because they were going to be laid off because the, we also had information that the, the mining company was actually going to close down the underground mine in future. And it meant that a lot of the underground miners were going to lose their jobs. So I went underground, uh, took up employment, went underground, and became a Clayton driver underground and started sensitizing the miners on the uh, incoming problem they will be facing very soon. We did not win, of course. The mine was sold, and that is what we call Goldfields Ghana Limited today. But the, the advantage is that it gave me a certain consciousness about mining and um, how a state could lose um, its focus and, and, and sell out to, to foreign interests. What happened was that when the Goldfields Ghana Limited bought the company. First, it operated the underground mine for a short time. And because it operated the underground mine, it was giving all, all the assets, the land, the buildings, you know, big estates, as an addition for operating the underground. Later on, they closed the underground mine and took up the surface mining. Many miners lost their jobs. Shocked, they turned to Daniel for answers. So I missed one of them, they, then they, they said, how did you know? that this was going to happen to us. I said, look, we, we learnt it. And from there, then we followed on on, on the issues about surface mining. And as, as agriculture, Hannah and I were working as agriculturists. We we're having first-hand information about how mining was affecting the peasants. That was how come we started this mining advocacy um, in, the, in, the, in the early 90s, the organizational work. But it was not until 98 that we formally launched WACAN. But the organizational work had gone on for a long time.